Welcome to Bashi's Corner. We discuss in this program issues which mainstream media doesn't take or is not interested in. We invite guests who are politicians, sports people, cultural personalities, anybody who has contributed positively to better the life of ethnic minorities. And my guest today has done exceptionally that wonderful job. Gabriel um, Seban, you have made this wonderful exhibition, I would call, um, you know, something which I have never seen before, actually. I myself photographer, I take a lot of pictures, but the way you have put it is very admirable and it's a wonderful tool to raise awareness among Danish uh, public, among ethnic minorities, why people come here, what they have done and how much they have contributed. But first, something about yourself. I mean, it would be nice to know who is this man behind the camera? Well, I'm uh, Gabriel, as you said. Uh, I'm Argentinian. I came five years ago. I'm married to a Dane, that's why I came. Okay. I studied political science back in Argentina. I studied a master in global studies in Rook here, mm. Roskilde University. And uh, I'm very sensitive for this social issue of immigrants in Denmark and how Danes approach integration and what integration means okay. here. That's very special. You have a very cosmopolitan um, background, you know. Yes. You have, you have, you're born somewhere, lived somewhere, traveled a lot, and then you ended up uh, in Denmark. Why this change? I mean, you married a, a Danish girl, but besides that, you know, there must be something else which attracted to you this country. Well, I think that uh, was mainly love. For mainly Sydney, love. Yes, for Sydney in a, in a way. But we decided with my partner to stay in Denmark because uh, well, she, she had most of her family here. Uh, I liked very much the country. I mm. like, still like Denmark a lot. Uh, I think it's a wonderful place. And, uh, and we can improve it even mm. more. And after you ended up in Denmark, because of the love, you know, we all uh, move to different places because we fall in love or we love a place or love food or whatever, you know. But you had to live in Sweden before you, you came here. Yes. How come a country you love and a woman you married or, or you live with is a Danish and then you have to start in Sweden? Well, we had to start in Sweden because my wife was under 24. So the Danish law says that you, you cannot bring your spouse if the Dane part of the, of the couple is 20, under 24 years old. Mm. So we, we wanted to be together and uh, we decided to live in another European country. And my wife was studying at the time, so she was studying at CBS. So, so we went to Malmö and it was, it's a very beautiful place, Malmö, but uh, the experience was not that good. Mm. because I, I could not do anything. I was waiting for my residence, to, for European residence, for three months. Then I started working, but I didn't start learning the language and because it was pointless. We were moved here. And my wife had to travel back and forth and find a job, and we had to rent an apartment that was very expensive. It was a very uh, uncomfortable time. But could you understand that Sweden allowed you to come Yes. And live there yes. and make a life. But the country you should have been there, they didn't. Mm -hmm. Was it frustrating? Yes, it was very frustrating. Okay. It was very frustrating. And, uh, and I could not understand at that moment if I wanted to be here. Because it, it clearly felt that the country didn't want me to. Mm. Uh, but, uh, well, my wife convinced me. She's very persuasive. Have to say. Okay, so it was mainly your wife's con <laughs> that she convinced you. <laughs> In that moment, yes. <coughs> okay. Yes. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because okay. this 24 years rule yeah. it is so strange. Yes. I mean, yes. a girl of 24 years or under 24 years, yes. she's mature in Denmark. You yes. can, uh, when you are over 18, you can have a driving license, you can buy apartment, whatever, but you cannot marry. It was more strange than that. We married in Denmark. Are you ma they allowed we you to mar get married, they, we but not live here. Yes, exactly. Is it a it little is bit very strange? strange? It is very strange. Mm. I think it's very strange. But it's how things are, unfortunately. Okay. Yes. So when you came from Sweden, after you were uh, allowed yes. to come in, um, 
How did you find the country? Honestly, how did you find the country? Rainy and dark. Rainy but well, and the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the weather okay. is very, is very, uh, and it's very powerful on mm. the mood of the people, right? Yes. But the, the summer, it's very, very wonderful. Mm. And the people are very, very nice. Uh, most of the people I know, I met, they were not, uh, they were not closed. They were not uh, rejected to the, the person that is different. But it was very difficult for me to relate to Danish uh, Danish people at the beginning, especially because of the cultural difference. In what, Argentina, what do you mean by that? In Argentina, we used to prick a little to make a joke about the other person to break the ice and to uh, start a, a friendship or a conversation okay. more deeply. Mm. But here, when you said that kind of things, the, the Danes uh, took it take it seriously. They took it as a they, they take it as a as, yeah. We could say as offensive. So it's different sense of humor, it's different approach, and I had to learn that, and at the beginning was very difficult. So you, you think that Danish humor is very peculiar? Yes, it is. Mm. It is. The irony, the in Danish irony is very peculiar. Okay, yes. and now you have mastered it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not even close. But I'm trying, and I'm, I'm trying to adopt some of the things that I like, and I'm trying to continue with some of the things that I like from my own culture. Okay, so when you moved, what did you do? When, when I moved, moved to Denmark, here, what did you do? I started studying a master in Roskilde University. Oh, that was smart. Yeah. And I work in a bar too at the moment. In a bar? Yep. Okay. Making, making drinks? Uh, s serving wine. <laughs> serving wine. <laughs> yes. Okay. As I said to you in the beginning, I have seen your photo uh, exhibition, uh, which says, meet my immigrants in Copenhagen. Yes. Both uh, at the Wor World Cultural Center and also on the Facebook. Are you a professional photographer? No, I wouldn't say that. I am an amateur photographer. The, the pictures are fabulous. Thank you very much. Yeah. I like photography and I have done it for many years. Okay. But I never studied or, or had a steady job as a photographer. So okay. only freelance. But where did you get this idea? How this idea came about? This idea came when I got to know a blog that is called Humans of New York. Okay. It's a Facebook blog that uh, Brandon, that's the guy that made it, uh, photographed different people of New York that lived in New York, asked a little question and put it on Facebook. Uh, and I, when I saw that, I realized that that could fix some of the problems that uh, we immigrants confront and Danish, Danish mm. people confront here in Copenhagen. I, when I came, I had this discussion about why immigrants are bad for Copenhagen mm. or for, for Denmark <coughs> with uh, some Danes. They and discussed that immigrants are bad. Yeah, they, they argued that the welfare system cannot tolerate to have uh, many immigrants and that immigrants come here to live from the welfare and they don't work and they don't study and well not you because you are standing this to me or not you because you are married to a Dane. Well not you but because, was, because I Anybody was there. Else? Yeah, because I was there. It's very difficult to confront for Danish people also. And uh, the lack of information about who are the immigrants and the, the difficulties to approach between the immigrants and the Danes because Danes are kind of closed mm. in their, and the language is so difficult to, to manage. Um, it made me realize that Facebook could work as a tool for reaching the Danes to tell the stories of immigrants that they mm. cannot find anywhere else. Copenhagen is very small. Yes. New York is mega country, yes. mega city, yes. uh, and people who live in New York, uh, they come from all over the world, uh, and in Copenhagen not especially, mm -hmm. but could you see the similarities? Between New York? Between those people you uh, saw on the Facebook um, from where you are inspired and the, the, and the people you talk to? Yes, we are all human beings. Okay. That's very important similarity. We all have <coughs> stories, we all have backgrounds. The, my, my blog as, as Humans of New York is not about why you moved from country or what are you doing in Denmark. Or mm. It can be about that, but not necessarily. And it tells a story of life. Or what, what is your biggest struggle? What, uh, what was the most difficult moment of your life? Or what's the, what do you, do you like the most to do? That can create... Uh, an identification from the reader to, to the person that is photographed. And mm. that is also working to fight racism. So it's not only just pictures of people, but there is a message behind this. Yeah. So what is that message to the Danish people? 
the message that is behind the project, the entire project, not uh, represented by every picture, yeah. is that we are all people. Is that we are we can live all together. That we have most things in common. That we have differences, and that our differences can enrich us instead of being a threat. So you think that uniformity is not a good thing? That everybody looks no. alike. <laughs> Diversity is a good thing. Diversity. Yeah. Okay. And that's the message you're sending. That's the message. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. How did you select the models? Because I saw there were people from different countries, girls, mm -hmm. men, and then there were elderly people. So uh, how did you meet them? You know, just uh, describe to me your voyage, your journey to meet those people. Well, uh, there is not a specific. I, I don't search for a specific type of people. Okay. I try to do as many as I can and to reach all the people I can. But where do you meet them? Uh, everywhere. In the street? It can be in the street, can be in supermarket, can be through a friend, can be in Danish school, can be Verdun's Kulturhus, uh, World Cultural Center, can be many places. So your eyes are open, you are looking for interesting faces, yes. interesting people. Yes. yes. And what happens when you reach the person, hey, I want to photograph you? Well, that, that's very, <laughs> that varies a lot. There are some that are very open, some that are afraid, oh. so, some that don't, don't want to participate, some that says, they are just racist, you're not going to change them. But oh, the reaction of people. Uh, yeah, it can be, can be very varied. So you tell them why you want to take a picture? Yes. I, t I explain all this and I, mm. I only photograph immigrants, of course, mm. right? So it, it is also a sensitive issue, but it's, it's normal. If somebody is <coughs> having a bad day that you receive a bad response and they don't want to participate, it's mm. also understandable. So you try to convey a story of the person or the person's history? Uh, yeah, it, it varies a bit. Okay. It very, can, very it, it, the, the, the key thing is that be, it has to be something personal hmm. and it has to identify the person that is in the picture in some way. It can be not a story but a thought. But I also try to, also the face I also try to fight the stereotypes. Uh -huh. If I find somebody from Iran, for example, I ask him about democracy. Hmm. If I find somebody from China, I ask him about babies. Babies. I don't know. Okay. Just to find something interesting. All right. To break the ice. Yeah, and to and to break stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. We have some some stereotypes. Greek Greeks are lazy. Chinese people work a lot. It's not true. I mean, at least it's not true for everybody. Yeah, exactly. But we just put people in the box, and mm -hmm. that's not good for our fight. One thing I noticed when I saw your exhibition in. Uh, World Cultural Center is that you don't put the names under the pictures. No. Why? Because I want to play with this a, a specific generalization. Okay. If I put the name of the person is that is one case that doesn't play the role but the the prejudice, the, the prejudgment that we have, the stereotype, it applies to everybody. So if I put the name, that person escapes from that. Mm. Maybe he stops of being Chinese, the Chinese guy, and starts being Xixing. I don't uh, know. Uh -huh. But uh, it's very important to play with this generalisa generalization, individualism, individualization, mm. and that's I think it's very it's part of the project. And I like that you don't know who it is. But people can I think it's interesting. Can't people see the faces? Can, uh, people can see the face, but uh, I, I allow that the people that are photographed, they can tag themselves in Facebook. Ah, okay. They can post comments, they do it mm -hmm. also. And people that know them, they send greetings yeah. through the web yeah. uh, through web page. But uh, yeah. I don't think that it's my role to identify. I don't want to show particular people. I don't want to show CVs. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture of uh, a man I know, <coughs> an elderly gentleman yep. from Pakistan. Yes. It's a beautiful picture where he's standing in the middle and on one side it is his son and the other side it is grandson. Yeah. So it's, it says how much uh, immigrants have contributed to, uh, to this, you know. And um, the gentleman normally doesn't like taking pictures, no. but he looked so relaxed, you know. What did you make so to make him so relaxed? I told him to smile. 
He's a very wow. happy man. Yeah, very, very. Yeah. very. <laughs> okay. That's a good secret, actually. Yeah. Um, in your Facebook, uh, and also when I uh, read your story in a newspaper, uh, you talked about the uh, reasons why Danes and immigrants uh, are not connecting each with each other. Well, some, yeah. That I, I mean, some, okay. That I think, yeah. Why? Why they are not, why people, after living here so many years, yes. are still finding hard to connect? Well, there are many barriers. Uh, I think that one barrier is uh, the language, of course, that is very difficult. And so the communication is essential to, to connect it to each other. There is also a cultural barrier. The difference of culture between the Danish culture is quite particular. But is it the is Danish culture one uh, entity, or Danish culture is very different from person to person, isn't it? Uh, yes, but uh, there are some similarities. Okay. Right, and there are some uh, ideas of the culture that we have, that we understand. For example, I'm Argentinian. I believe that every Argentinian eat meat. They are vegetarians, of course, but <laughs> it's part of our culture. Meat is very important for us. Oh yeah, that's the big meat industry in yeah. <laughs> Argentina. So, uh, th and there's some ways that Argentinians react to to our talking that I cannot expect expect a Danish pe person to react in the same way. Okay. And the culture, the Danish, it it happens exactly the same. When I come to a Dane and say, hey, hi, how are you? They really answer. They really answer how they are. Mm. And that's, that can take th five to 10 minutes, maybe. And uh, I was just saying, hi, how are you? Because in Argentina we say, hi, how are you? Mm. Just to say hi, not to really asking the question, okay. but just to say, hello. Just to connect. Yeah, uh -huh. and it happened to me many times. Mm. Well, that's also part of the culture. That, that's also part of the mixing us in between. Mm. And that is very difficult to understand the Danish codes for, for an immigrant that comes mm. for the first time. And uh, Danish people are very closed, unfortunately. Well, not all, of course, no, but especially, but general, especially outside the big cities. And... Uh, and it's uh, difficult to reach to them. And many times it's difficult for them to ask questions because they are also very curious, but it, they are afraid to sound racist. Uh. So this photo exhibition I made, I like the idea that it was a place that, uh, was a, that people understood that it was in a respectful framework. And you, can, you could ask whatever. Mm -hmm. What does it mean that scarf on your head? I really want to know. Okay. But that could be offensive outside that context. Okay. So yes, the context is very important. The context is very important. Okay. Yes. Now I want to ask you a little uh, naughty question. You have been working in a bar. Yes. Okay. I am told by some friends, and my personal experience also, I've lived here many years, that in the beginning, uh, Danes are quite uh, inhibited, you know. Yes. Uh, but when, uh, and I'm not talking about all, but m many of them, but after they have a couple of shots, whatever they drink, yes. that they loosen up. Yes, it's true. Is it true? Absolutely. Why? Why should alcohol help them to relax? That's a good question. I think it helps everybody. <laughs> it, it doesn't help me. I don't no. drink. Well, no. that's just because you don't drink. I can be very open yeah. to you without any drinking. That, and that's wonderful. Um, <coughs> I can be very open too, but uh, I don't know. Maybe alcohol is... Uh, it has a role to play here in, in the Denmark. Danish society. Yes. Is it, it, is it just self-made role or it is, it's not nature? You know? But it's also the context. In Roskilde yeah. Festival, everybody is very open. It's because of the music? It's be no. no, before the Atmosphere. music. It's because of the, the festival. Everybody is uh, there and uh, dirty and uh, there are no parameters. and. Uh, so everybody is very open to everybody and it's so very we relaxed. Should have, we should have a Roskilde festival every yeah. day. <laughs> There's also uh, something about culture, Danish culture, the Protestantism that is uh, very heavy in Denmark. Ah. That uh, it makes, I think, uh, it has this effectiveness and productivity mm. uh, back what, what that everybody carries here. Yes. You, know, you have to use your time right and you have to be productive all the time. And, uh, that's also 
uh, in Rose Kilo Festival you don't feel that and maybe that allows you to, to be up. more open. Okay. Uh, you have also have a Facebook page? Yes. Uh, do people visit it a lot? Uh, yes, I have almost nine, nine uh, 6,990 likes. That's a lot. That's a lot, yes, and it's growing. Wonderful. Yeah. And they leave good uh, comments? Yes. Uh -huh. um, yes. Okay. And very respectful, most of them. Uh, all a, lot of them. Of yeah. a lot of respect for the work you do. And they, can, they like also the, the method? Yeah, Okay. very much. Um, did you have any exposure in the mainstream media? Yes, I had. I have been in uh, TV to Lorry. A TV to Lorry, yes. Yes, and I have. Uh, there was a coverage of the photo sitting okay. in uh, Weekend Tavisen. Wow, that's a big right wing newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. wonderful. But they try to be centered. Oh, no, I, it was I, very interesting, and uh, it was uh, it was my project with other two, and uh, there is actually a movement that is uh, growing, of uh, that that tries to escape this mm, closeness okay. or or. So do you think that do you think the media can play an important part in bringing people together? Yes, fundamental. Yes. Mm. Okay. But also people can play a big part. Then talking about. Uh, integration and people coming together. Uh, how do you find this debate about immigrants now getting harsher and harsher? How to deal with that? It's um, it's horrible how the debate is in Denmark. Um, I don't like um, I I don't like the, the the way that politicians express themselves. Mm. It's it has the positive side that you know where they are, where they are standing, because everybody talks and everybody can say whatever they they want. But uh, but I think it's it's a bit too much sometimes. Okay. Um, do you think that uh, immigrant cultures and Danish culture can create a hybrid or a new culture? I think that the Danish culture will evolve inevitably and it will change. And I think that the, the Danish culture has to be open enough to improve itself, especially can take things from other cultures that are living here in Denmark. Any future plans for more exhibitions? Yes. Uh -huh. I hopefully will do one in August, but it's not confirmed yet, okay. but yes. In the end, I would like to ask you um, any message to my audience, you know, what, what is their vision of the future? The vision of the future of my project or the of Denmark? Uh, the vision of the future of Denmark, that's a very open one. That's uh, diversity mm. and it's only good. Mm. Gabriel, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you and your exhibition is wonderful and I'm sure that much. my audience who will go on your Facebook and look at those pictures and see a new wonderful lovely beautiful Denmark evolving into intercultural inter-ethnic and inter-religious inter, uh, uh, society thank you very much for coming pleasure meeting you thank you very much